This week on 3D Archery, we're on to step four of building a laminated bow. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archery. Alright, step four. Now, if you haven't watched the other videos, well you can go back and watch them. The first step is to build a heat box. I have a video on that. The second step is to build a bow form for an air press, that's what we call it. And the third step is to build a riser. So now the fourth step is to actually do what you're doing. You're going to build a laminated bow. We're going to do the lamination. Alright, pretty simple um, process, straightforward. But just like building the risers, there's a couple steps that you've got to focus on. So, first, let's go over the material needed. So, first thing you're going to need is, obviously, a bow press, two sides. You're also going to need a metal pressure strip. We'll go over that when we actually make it, and you'll see what it's used for. It's used to make it, you put it on top of the, um, the laminations of the bow, and underneath the air holes to even out the pressure. All right, speaking of that, Gonna need an air hose. Uh, you can buy these, just get the plug, that, test them before you use them. Now you're gonna fill your air hose. Well, if you don't have a compressor, this tire pump works just fine. All right, now when you're using epoxy, which is something else you're gonna need, I like EA40, uh, <coughs> excuse me, two parts A and B. Need an opener. Gonna need something to put it in to mix it. You're going to need something to mix it up with. Popsicle sticks. You can also use these to apply the epoxy to the laminations or a scraper. Okay. To protect the form, the table, you're going to need plastic wrap. You're also going to need protect the work table, wax, oops, wax paper. And you're going to need a couple sets of um, latex gloves because you'll probably use them up so you're going to be switching them from time to time all right and the last thing you're going to need is some paste wax now this is car paste wax um, i prefer johnson's paste wax but i had a hard time getting hold of it and what this is for is you put it on material like this on the form on the metal strip so the epoxy doesn't adhere to it adhere to it or adhere you know make up my own words while we're at it all right that is all the materials you're going to need. You're also going to need your hot box, which is, for me, right over there. All right? So there's the materials you need. It's pretty simple how to laminate a bow. But there's a couple things. And remember, on the other one, we talked about making sure your form is in really good shape. Your form is critical. The belly side of your riser, the side that goes onto the form, the bottom half of it, the one down here, is very critical. The front part of your riser, the part that's away from you, the belly, right? That is critical. That has to meet this as close as possible. Now the back side of it, not as bad. You can, you can have a lot of variance in play because that air hose takes up for it. All right, so I got all my stuff together. I'm going to set up and we're going to laminate a bow. The first step is a dry run. Dry run is exactly what it says it is. You're going to do everything that you would do on your build, and you're just testing the process, making sure everything fits, looking for any flaws. And it's funny I should say that in this video, because guess what? All right, everybody, so you see me doing my dry run, right? But I had to stop. Why? Because I found, and this is why we do the dry run, that my air hose was just a tad too short and it was going to probably cause problems. So I stopped the build, went out and ordered a new one. And that 
is the best reason why you do a test run. One, it teaches you how what's going on. You can learn it and you can find these errors before they become a real problem because trying to do it while it's all laminated would have caused me some serious errors. So there, my friends, is an important lesson. And I'm glad I did it. So we'll put this on hold, which would be like seconds for you. Get the new parts and I'll pick it back up. All right, dry run's done, and this is why you do it. You're looking for areas where there are gaps. Now, see there's a gap down here, right? But the hose is bending enough that it is putting pressure on it. But one thing how you protect is when we um, laminate it up, we're gonna put tape there, it's just to make sure it gets down. And I'm also gonna measure it, and I might make a little block and put a piece of wood in there. The big areas you wanna check is the fades. Make sure the fades are connecting well. And you can see right here it's not. And I was always wondering about this because the sharp edge, I don't think it's going to be able to do it. So what I'm going to probably have to do is cut the mica net right there, right? And that area there, allowing it to bend better. Now I can also tape this down, trying to get it in there. But that's why we do this, the dry run, so we can look at and address any possible issues with our build. So we're looking good. This is my biggest question. Everything else looks like it is sealed well, except for that spot right there. So that's really the only one I gotta look at. And I got two possibilities of fixing it. I can cut it, or I can um, tape it down and hope that will work. All right, I don't think the tape's gonna work. It looks like I am going to be cutting my strips. All right, everybody, the dry run, we did it. We identified a couple issues. How I corrected is I cut the laminations. Now this is how I'm gonna approach to it. The top one's done. The bottom one, I cut the laminations right here. And when I tape it down, it should sit nice and flush, all right? Thing about doing this, yeah, it helps if you get your riser lined up. That's why it didn't look right. There you go, nice and flush, all right? No, you can't see it, so I'll bring the camera in for you. Mars or marks. There we go. As you can see, when I tape it, it'll go down really well. I'm going to add a little bit of bend here in my middle just to ensure that. So, the question you're probably asking is, well, how many dry runs should I do? There's no answer. You do enough until you are confident and ready to laminate. Because once you laminate, that's it. You know, there's no going back. You can't change things. You can't make corrections. <clears throat> you are pressed for time. So, do as many dry runs as you want. Get the process down on your first few builds. All right, then you'll understand more what I'm talking about. Get the process down, then when it comes time to laminate, you'll have all the moves figured out, what to do, what order, where to place things. All right, so I'm gonna do one more dry run. I'm gonna put it all into the hose, right? Take a look at it. I wanna see how it's coming out, and if it's good, 
Then it's on to our next step, laminating the bow. One thing you're going to notice in your dry runs, you can have a lot of movement of material. It's going to slide left and right. But that's not going to happen in your build. Because remember, when we build it, when we get it all set up, we're going to tape it down using the reinforced tape so it doesn't slide around like that. So be aware of it. See where things are sliding. And then you'll tape those areas. It's a little tip that will really help you down the road. All right, now that we completed our dry run, it's time to organize for the build, right? You're gonna need, you can do it all in one area. I've done it, but today I'm gonna do parts of it here and parts of it over here. And the big thing when you organize, especially where you're gonna put, use the epoxy net, you gotta make sure it's clean. So make sure you get your stuff out, sweep it down really well, clear anything out of the way that can get in your way, because I'm telling you, if it can, it will. All right, now once we got it clean, we're gonna organize. We're gonna set everything out like we need it, exactly how we're gonna use it, all right? While we're doing that, we're gonna turn on our heat box to preheat it. We're gonna heat up our laminations into our epoxy. Because once you start this process, this is when you're on the clock, like they say, and you gotta be efficient. So the more time you spend organizing it, the more efficient you'll be and the easier your build will be.